All right, so now we're uh we're getting the the what is it the mare seal? Yeah, we're getting the mare seal because Dick Bag uh wants the mare seal, so that's what I'm doing right now. Right now, that literally scared the hell out of me. Surprisingly, I didn't jump though. Anyway, I told y'all what happened on day one and the night of day two, or the first night, staying there, sleeping there. Well, what happened during the day of day two was, uh, okay, so throughout the whole night, uh, Austin's cat noodles was laying on my shin and my ankle, pretty much. So I had a cat laying on my legs for like five to six hours throughout the night while I was cuddling with my girlfriend, which is weird. But I didn't mind it. I mean, Noodles eventually got up and did what she did best, and that's be wound for sound, run across the room every which way. But, I mean, I didn't mind it. The cat didn't bother me at all, so I was good. But, uh. uh and then I kept waking up throughout the night in general because I couldn't really. I can't. I don't know really how to say this, but I just couldn't sleep. Like, constantly sleep. I couldn't pass out. I couldn't get into a deep sleep. I mean, I slept. But I slept for like hours. Like, I, like I slept for an hour, woke up, looked around, went back to be a, went back to sleep, woke up again, and the rinse and repeat, pretty much. So I think the most sleep I ever got consecutively was like, two hours. At best. I got more sleep the second night though. Uh so there's that. I mean I it is what it is. It happens. <laughs> but yeah, and then uh Austin woke up, jumped down at nine because he had to go into Taylor town for something. We don't know. We still don't know. But he said he had to go into the building, he'll be back. And then Allison woke up. No, then after he left, Allison left to go take a shower at her house and then she came back like, really quick she came back quickly like she was only gone for maybe half an hour to an hour at best no half an hour at most and then she came back got inside got something to eat i don't know she got a yogurt and then went outside to leave me and danny alone because we were just we were still laying there sleeping but as she walked in, I like lifted my head really high and it looked like I looked at her like she was a stranger. And then we exchanged highs, and then I just laid my head down again and slept. Although that time it was a bit different because our sleeping had arranged. Because after Austin woke up, me and Danny were awake for a bit. We, we were like awake for maybe and talking for an hour to an hour and a half, and then. I pretty much pulled her closer and we slept for like an extra two hours face to face. Bo still hasn't watched our Resident Evil 5 videos. What a dick. Damn. It's his own videos and he hasn't even watched them yet. Shit. Wait, what? I have, have to rewatch what? Oh shit! But anyway, uh, but yeah, this isn't me ranting, by the way. This is just me like relishing in the memory of the fact that I slept with Danny and I cuddled with her for hours on ends for two nights in a row, and that was nice. I really enjoyed that part of the trip. Like it was my favorite part by far, pretty much. But, and then Austin, um, I don't know, no, me and Danny woke up, we eventually went outside, and Allison was running away from a wasp, because that's why we went outside, because we were kind of curious, because Danny eventually kind of like, showed that she was awake. Yeah, she opened her eyes and looked up and everything, and so we got out of bed, and then we went outside because we saw Allison and she moved from the bench to the side of the, the cabin and laid there in front of the window. And we were like, 
not laid there, sat there at the stairs, at the stairs in front of the window, and we were kind of curious why she did that. So, or yeah, we were kind of curious why she did that. So we went outside to go check on her. So we did that, and uh, and it was nice. I enjoyed it. It was it was pretty cool. Not really, because there was a wasp. That's why she was running. And we didn't blame her. Uh, her yogurt was also frozen. It was, had ice in it from being in that fridge. Yeah, and it was just the fridge. It was just the ice box too. Because there's a mini freezer compartment in that mini fridge. And it wasn't in the freezer compartment. It was in the mini fridge. And there's pumpkin! Cute baby girl. You my cuddle buddy at night. Yeah, you are. You've been my cuddy buddle. Cuddy... Cuddle buddy, many of times. Yeah, what you gonna do? But yeah, so that was nice. And then we played Monopoly, Lord of the Rings edition. Uh, Danny beat us hardcore. Um, then we played Uno several times, many, many times. Like I went from having no victories, Allison to having five, and Danny to having like three. So it was like, it was Allison 5, Danny 3, me 0. And then the second time we played it after us, pretty much me looking at Danny on Facebook, or looking at what she's doing on Facebook, playing her criminal minds game, just scroll feeding, and Allison's pretty much doing the same thing, just not the criminal minds, or whatever, criminal case, yeah, that's what that game is. Uh, so... After that, we decided to play Uno again, and I won three times in a row. No, Danny won the first one, then I won three or four times in a row, and then Allison won twice. So that brought her up to seven, and then me and Danny four apiece. And that's where we left of that, so Allison won that. Hmm. And then Austin had to work at DQ, and he didn't come till like five with Haley, and we didn't know Haley was going to be with him. But when we saw him drive down with the other person, we assumed it was Haley. And it was. So that was interesting. And then we all played, uh, you know, we had a water gun fight, which was really fun and amazing. And Allison stated something that couldn't have been more true. Uh, it is like us against them. Three versus two. And it, it was. It was me, Danny, and Allison versus Austin and Haley. Of course it was. Uh, I eventually captured the cabin, eventually, after they took it over. And so after I took it over, uh, I stayed in there, pretty much, so I could do stuff. And that was refill my water gun because I had ran out. And the lake was not filling it up at all. So there's that. And then also, as I have my kicky fit, <laughs> with that badass head smash. Uh, and then after that, uh, we had he filled up some water balloons. He hit me in the arm, but really didn't get me all that much. Uh, he got Allison in the leg, and he never got Danny, but I was told he chased them with a bucket full of Lake Taylorville water, which is nasty. Like, nasty as hell, dude. And then we played Frisbee, and that was fine and dandy, I guess, until I said something. Because I said something that was pretty much an inside thing between me and Danielle. No, I didn't say it. I was going to say it, but I thought better of it, and I was like... I'm not going to say it, because I didn't feel like saying it. I was like, nah, I can't do it. It's just not going to work. Nope, I can't. So I refrained myself from saying it. I pretty much said it out loud because I wasn't really thinking, which was my issue. I wasn't really thinking. So there's that, and then Haley kind of got upset, I guess, because I mentioned something that only Danny would be able to understand at that moment. I mean, they should have understood too, because I was talking about, okay, I say on the edge or over the edge, and my ex-girlfriend that I'm not very fond of anymore, 
uh, her last name is Edge. So now every time I say that, Danny gives me that look. Or if I say it over text, she says, on the edge, question mark, not question mark, on the edge, period, and then continues. Like, it's, it's pretty much her telling me she's giving me that look like you said it. On the edge. Because every time I say it, and then she gives me a look, it's like, don't you fucking say it. Uh, but, yeah, there's that. <laughs> but, I mean, it is what it is. I say that a lot. It is what it is. But Jesus. And then Haley kind of got upset. I mean, Danny didn't understand at first until I told her what it was. And she was like, too, she totally understand because they set me up with her. They're the ones who asked me out for her. Mm hmm. So that's how that happened. But yeah, they could have understood it, but they didn't. And so she got mad. And so she had to leave because she had to go home and something to do with supper. And that was the last time we saw them for a very, very long time. Because that was around five-ish. Like, he got there around three. They were there for two hours, and then they left, and they were gone. For pretty much the whole entire night. Except for 20 minutes when they came back. But I'll get to that when I get to that. First of all... Uh, after they left, we went back inside and we did something. I can't remember. I can't really remember. It only really matters. Uh, then I think we played Uno again. Also, then we decided to go outside and start a fire. Allison left to go get more firewood. We all brought the wood to the fire place. Uh, and she started the fire around 7, and it lasted until we went to bed around 2. So I don't really know when that thing went out. I really don't. But it eventually went out, and so that was a thing. That's good. That's good. It, it eventually went out, and that's all that matters, honestly. So, that's well, obviously because it was raining the very next morning. Uh, anyway, but, yeah. Uh, so... Austin and Haley, no, no, no. Okay, so while Allison left, we had to keep the fire going. So when the fire looked like it was about to die, we had to fix it. So I think this. Oh yes, I love that drop kick. So I'm pretty sure at this point I have to, I have to go to the bunker, or I'm trying to get to the bunker. But I'm trying to kick him off the roof because I'm trying to get that achievement. You have to kick a hundred zombies off the roof or a cliff. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> as I was saying. But yeah, we had to keep the fire going. And while we were laying there on the blanket, somewhat cuddling, like we were probably cuddling. Yeah, most likely. Ah, wonderful. Because I remember cuddling with her for I a bit on the blanket. This seal to the fullest extent but of my corruption. yeah, and so we were trying to think of imaginary cash. friends to blame it on. We couldn't blame it on Fred or George. 
or Bob because they were trees. Supports a very wealthy class of citizens. Uh, so the, the only name she accepted was Obi Wan Kenobi. Out of all of the names I said, was probably close to so fifty. It up. The bunker is under the town hall. I can monitor your progress on the city services band. Radio me if you need some paperwork from the office of the mayor. I'll be generating reams of it. Maybe. Or maybe not. But anyway... Oh. It, it, it is what it is. Not really. I didn't really belong there. <laughs> oh yeah, I tried kicking her off and it just doesn't work. So I just end up killing her. Uh, but yeah... We tried coming up with imaginary friends, but we didn't need to because I did a good job of keeping that fire going. Uh, Allison did an amazing job of starting it, but I kept it going, and then she kept it going, and I think uh, Danny was the only one who didn't try to keep it going. But Allison did most, like, 98% of the work. Yeah, because I only had to do it twice to keep the fire alive. Um, but... So that happened, and then we played Yahtzee, and I won a game, and then Allison won a game, so 2-1, she the victor. Um, yeah, that pussy right there runs away. Like, he, he, got put his hand, he puts his hands up, he dies, and the other one runs away. Like, he just runs away. He tries, he tries to fight back, but he falls off the roof and dies, and then it takes a while for this guy to actually be able to speak to. But anyway... As, I, as I'm saying quite frequently right now. Ah. Whew. So then Austin eventually came back as we were all sitting around the fire that Allison had started around 7. And this was like 11. I don't know. Around 11.30. They came back. Uh, Austin was supposed to help us cook. He went inside. Haley went inside. Danny thought she heard her say something. something but most of it was mumbled. But it sounded like what she said when she usually talks shit. So we just assumed that they were talking shit uh, about how awkward it is for them that me and Danielle are dating. Which I don't understand because I literally don't do much around them to make them awkward with. I, I don't, honestly. I really don't. Like, I'm... The most I've ever done around them is that night when Haley flipped out on us without showing any hint or whatsoever. Otherwise, I've been pretty tame. Chill, actually. About it. I mean, the most... The only other time I can say they probably could have got awkward was when they were on the swings and me and Danny were on that seesaw. That's the only other time I can think of. So, there's that. But, and then they left, no, then they got out of the cabin with all of Austin's stuff, got in the car and left. They, they didn't even say goodbye. No, they just got in the car and left. They didn't, they didn't say goodbye at all. And then Allison was pissed off because, well, the very next day was her birthday. So, that and... Danielle was upset that she wasn't first to say it because, you know, I was right there because I saw her come out and I was like, bang, happy birthday. And she really didn't see Allison come out, so she's like, shit. <laughs> and so, well, she got crap for that considering she's the best friend and I'm just the best friend's boyfriend. <laughs> I don't know. I consider Allison a friend. Not that close of a friend, but I consider her a friend at the most. Uh, anyway, and then we pretty much did that, and then we went inside after some guys walked by and started, uh, um, how do you put this? I don't know, acting like douchebags. Or not really douchebags. Speaking like some. Because they asked her how old she was and if she was legal. Well... Technically she was, she just turned 18, which was the funny part, I, I thought that was ironic. Uh, 
but then Allison got, uh, she got scared, so a little before two we went into the cabin and got ready to sleep. So Allison was going to sleep on the top bunk, but she decided to go to her bed. And like, I don't, around three, she, she's like, nope, screw it. I don't like this window. It's, it's creeping me out. So she got to the top bunk, and then that was that. And then me and Danielle, we talked for a while before we both passed out. So that was nice. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't it be? Uh, I just enjoy cuddling with her at night, and especially falling asleep to cuddling with her. That's even better. That's like the greatest thing ever. Oh my god. So, yeah, there was that. <clears throat> and then we eventually woke up, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Because neither one of us, none of us wanted to get up. Like, literally none of us wanted to get up. And we had to be out of there by 11. So, I eventually got up and they're like, how the hell are you up, dude? Like, fuck, man, how are you standing? I was like, I don't know. How are you sitting up? And so Danny was the last to get up. I also had to go to the bathroom. And then Danny seen... Danny went to the bathroom after that. And then we sorted everything. <laughs> and then we left. Which was the end of the cabin, but we left pissed off and teeming with the fact of what Haley and Austin just did. And that's pretty much how the rest of that night went, was ranting about them. And ranting to others, other than our, each other who were there, we, we ranted to our friends, we texted them the whole situation. I was a bit late on that and texted Bo, like, I don't know, oh shit, it was like two days later, I believe so, no, no, it was last night, yeah, because I remember now, because, I don't know if, like, I don't know if it was exactly last night, no, it wasn't last night. It wasn't yesterday. It was the day before that. It was two days ago when I recorded the video that I was talking that I'm talking about. That'll be uploaded, or will have already been uploaded by the time this even gets uploaded. Probably even before I even edit this at all. Uh, but yeah, because of something else that just went completely and absurdly wrong. Just when you think all the drama in the world is gone. It finds a way to find you. It will not leave. It just will not leave. He keeps coming back. But before that, uh, I didn't finish the cabin store. Okay, so we all divided that shit. We put it in the vehicles. It was pouring rain. Like, not really hard. It was light rain, but it was a drizzle. Uh, and so, then we got in the car, and then we drove to... Well, then Danny dropped me off, but, you know, dropping me off is kind of, it's not a short thing to do when we technically don't get much time to see each other, and the only reason for that, well, okay, we don't get much alone time together, other than being in the car. Wow, it took me forever to get his head. Dick. I remember now. I just set this dude up for a fight. That's right. Uh, you're right. Uh, spoiler alert. A dude with the axe there never dies. He runs off to be forgotten forever. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so me and Danny, we pretty much just like. We sat there and we talked till she had to go to work, which was like three-ish. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to make it fair, but that bitch isn't making it easy. Like, I kill her. Watch. Boom. And this is a great part. Yes! <laughs> I shot her foot and it launched her, and she's dead. Oh my god, that was fucking fantastic. 
Anyway, we sat there and talked. And I got her to say it happens twice just in that time period alone, just sitting in front of my house. It was a good thing my sister was off at Six Flags, because uh, Danny took up that parking spot for quite, quite some time. Whoa. So, I mean, that was fantastic and all. And uh, alongside that is a... Uh, there's, there's two things I count, or we count, that I've made us count. Okay, I count every time she say it happens, because she doesn't like saying it happens. But I enjoy it, because she flips out every single time she does. Like, she'll say it happens, and then immediately afterwards she cusses a storm, because she realizes she just said it. But... And then the other thing we count is I remember telling you guys about that cheesy Harry Potter line I was telling you about. Well, I eventually I did I'm, I wasn't lying I told Bo I was gonna tell say it to her and I did and I count that too because uh, there's I sent her a text and I said something like at least 50 times so I said so I pretty much sent it to her almost. So I said I was going to say it 50 times. So we're tied a piece at 13. She said 13, it happens, and I have told her that pickup line. Or not really pickup line. See, he died. And then he runs off like a little bitch. Shot him in the leg. Yeah, right there it did. But... Yeah, I, it was, uh, it's, your smile's like Expelliarmus. Simple, yet disarming. And so I, uh, for her birthday, I told you all about that, it's coming up soon. Uh, I still, I have not finished that yet. I still have to draw the seventh books. I've got one through six done, I just have to get seven done. I even got the Hufflepuff symbol done. Emblem, whatever. I've got it done. It's good to go. It's rearing to go. And then I've got that Facebook picture I'm going to post that says, My beautiful Hufflepuff, your smile's like spelling on. Simple yet disarming. Uh, unnecessary because he's dead, but I shot his head off anyway. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there's that. And so I'm going to say that. And we're at 13 currently. Anyway, that is it for this video. Ta-ta for now.